Hello YouTube and welcome back to Be A Loser. In this video we discuss why reducing calories will ruin your metabolism. So in our previous videos we discussed the common mainstream view of obesity. The assumption being that if you overeat you become fat and if you reduce how much you eat you should lose weight. I think we started to fairly effectively show that this line of thinking is pretty off base and that the reality of weight gain and weight loss is not nearly so simple. So just to hammer things home a bit, let's discuss the famous Minnesota starvation experiment that was published in the 1950s by the famous or infamous Ansel Keys. As always it's linked in the description but I'll sum it up here. The 36 subjects were estimated to be eating roughly 3,200 calories per day, so they were put on a diet of 1,560 calories per day, which is considered semi-starvation. Additionally, their diet consisted of food available in Europe during World War II, that being potatoes, turnips, bread, and macaroni. They were monitored for 20 weeks after the semi-starvation experiment. And the results were both psychological and physical. The physical effects were coldness, continual hunger, weakness, exhaustion, dizziness, muscle wasting, and hair loss. Heart volume reduced by 20% and heart rate slowed. Additionally, their resting metabolic rate decreased by 40%. As we discussed previously, this makes sense because the body will not allow you to simply waste away because you're not eating enough food. If there's a consistent reduction in calories in, the body will match with an equal or greater reduction in calories out. Now, the psychological effects were constant thoughts of food, binging behavior, depression, emotional distress, irritability, reduced sex drive, and social isolation. Any of that sound familiar? Sure it does. To anyone who has ever tried eat less, move more. Okay, so what happened to them over the 20 weeks after the experiment? Well, during the experiment, though the men were obviously miserable, they did lose weight. But after the experiment, within 12 weeks, they regained weight to above where they started. That's the problem with reducing calories. When you lose the weight, it's both fat and muscle mass. But then when you put the weight back on, it's mostly fat. So as we've now seen from two experiments, one in 1917, discussed previously, and one in 1945 by Ansel Keys, reducing calories in will result in a reduction of calories out. They're linked and therefore not under conscious control as we're led to believe. But if you're still skeptical, then let's discuss a modern study done in 1995 that was published in the New England Journal of Medicine. Of course, the link is in the description. In this experiment, 18 subjects were obese and 23 were not. They were fed a liquid diet of 45% carbs, 40% fat, and 15% protein until they either gained or lost weight to a target number. The point of all of this was to determine what a change in weight did to TEE, total energy expenditure, or metabolism. There was no change in the diet other than the amount of it that was eaten. Simply put, they were trying to see what happens to calories out if we increase or decrease calories in. So what did happen? Well, those who gained 10% weight saw an increase in TEE, or calories out, of about 500 calories per day, meaning that the body was burning the excess calories. This, of course, flies right in the face of those who believe that overeating causes obesity. Obviously, the body is ramping up the metabolism to use the excess calories. And in those subjects who saw a 10 to 20% weight loss, well, their TEE dropped by 3 to 400 calories per day. This makes sense, really, if you think about it. If you weigh, say, 180 pounds, and you reduce the number of calories that you eat to a point where you would lose, say, 18 pounds per year without intervention from the body, then within 10 years, your fat would be gone, 
Your body will then metabolize your muscle, bone, and organs, and finally your heart and brain until you're dead. And anyone who believes the body is designed to allow this, well, then I have some swamp land in Florida to sell you. <laughs> the body is designed to prevent this from happening. So when you reduce calories in, your body responds by slowing your metabolism and reducing your calories out. And this is a definitive slap in the face to those who believe that if you simply reduce calories in, you'll lose weight. Nope, that's not going to happen, ever. Not long term, at least. Once more, we'll use the analogy of the body working more like a thermostat than a scale. It's not the simplistic view that a balance between calories in and calories out is what controls weight gain or weight loss. As you're told by, well, everyone? In reality, the body is more like a thermostat. There's a point called the body set weight, BSW, which we've discussed in other videos. If you try to lose weight below this point, your body will respond by lowering your metabolism to make you gain the weight back up to the BSW point. This is why the eat less, move more, or crap method does not work. It's simply too difficult. You continually have to reduce how many calories you eat to combat your own body trying to make you gain weight. And of course, this is a fight you will lose, and 98% of people do. I'll simplify why. It's hopefully starting to make sense, but let's break it down one more time. Let's assume that we eat 2,000 calories per day and burn 2,000 per day, and we keep our diet consistent. If in one day we eat 2,500 calories, our body will burn those calories by increasing our metabolism to 2,500 calories as well meaning that our body increases the TEE to handle the extra calories and we gain no weight. Now, if we look at the opposite, the often recommended portion control, we reduce our calories in to 1,500 calories per day. Now, initially we lose weight and feel great about it, if a bit hungry. But soon, six to nine weeks most likely, we start to feel cold, hungry, irritable, and obsessed with food. The body has lowered our TEE to 1,500 or even 1,400 calories per day, so our metabolism has slowed to keep us from burning more energy than we're eating. And we become miserable and, of course, feel like losers. We're so hungry all the time that we decide that we can increase our calories in by 250 per day. This is still only 1,750, which is 250 below what we were initially eating and now we start to gain weight. We're eating more than we're burning because our body has slowed our metabolism. So we give up and just assume we can't lose weight. And now we put on more weight as fat than we began with initially. And everyone thinks that we simply don't have willpower or can't follow instructions and that it is entirely our fault. But it's not. The studies prove that, and you're not a loser, unless you want to be a loser and find a way to reset that BSW. And that's what we'll continue to explore in this series. So be sure to subscribe to be updated when we upload new videos. Also, please like and comment if you find that the videos are helpful. You can also be updated by following us on Facebook at Be A Loser Today, and of course, all of the videos are on our website at BeALoser.today. I'd like to thank you for watching, and until next time, keep being a loser.